they asked him, Dad, instead of having your chest cut open, why don't you open your mouth and put different plant-based foods? And uh, he thought we are crazy. Like you guys, you know, went to US, studied there, and like you're working in Canada, and you're telling me that I don't need to listen to two board certified cardio- cardiologists. I just need to change my diet. Like, and they told me, the cardiologist told me that I need to have the surgery within a week. Otherwise, you could get a heart attack any minute. Yeah. I'm like, Dad, this is, uh, this is the research of Dr. Sustein. Give us you know, just a couple of weeks. You don't need to have stents or bypass surgery right now. Just give us a couple of weeks. He decided to give us two weeks to try. Within that two weeks, he was walking longer distances with no shots of breath. But whole food, plant-based eating, uh, longer distances he was walking. and. Uh, chest pain no more chest pain and his blood sugar control was so good that his doctor has to cut his diabetic pills by 50 percent in two weeks hello and welcome to the eat real to heal podcast on today's show we have two doctors they are a husband and wife team and they are incredible incredible because of the fact that they have the power through their knowledge, their expertise, through everything that they have learned and that they are bringing to their patients, they have the power to eradicate the chronic disease epidemic, particularly around heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, and all of those chronic lifestyle diseases that are truly caused by the foods that we eat, the stressors that we have in the life, our poor sleep habits and patterns. And they have been doing this work out of Newfoundland, Canada. So it's very exciting to have two physicians that are working side by side, that are working together to help Canadians be able to understand that one of the leading chronic diseases that are out there, heart disease, and diabetes are actually reversible. And if any of you know me and the work that we do through Richer Health Consulting, through the Green Mustache, through our charity, Sea to Sky Thrivers Society, and the impetus behind 22 Million Strong, our campaign where I will be traveling across Canada next year, running and biking to be able to work with BIPOC communities across Canada to understand and the barriers to accessing clean real food so that we can use these foods as medicine to reverse chronic diseases, you'll know that that is our mission, that that is everything that we are about. So to meet two physicians that came across this information on their own, you're going to hear all about their story. It is fantastic to know that physicians who went through the you know, current medical training, just like all the other physicians that are out there, but they went above and beyond. They were curious, they kept learning, they came across information that blew their minds, that opened up their world to the world of food as medicine. So you're going to learn all about their personal journey into defying the system and to turning around and being able to help patients instead of using medications and surgery that they're able to use their kitchens as their local pharmacy. So before we dive into that, of course, let's dive into who these two individuals are. So Dr. Shoba Rayapudi, she is a physician and epidemiologist, and let me say that one more time, an epidemiologist. So that's somebody who looks at population studies. They look at, you know, mass groups of people and they look at what the trends are within those populations. She's also a researcher as well. She is certified as a board, an American Board of Lifestyle Medicine physician. She holds a medical degree from, and I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but Ranga Raya Medical College, and she also holds a certification in plant-based nutrition from Cornell University. In addition to that, she has a Master of Science degree in epidemiology from John Hopkins University. She was working as a clinical researcher at John Hopkins for clinical trials, and her principal scientific interests have been on the effects of nutrition in preventing and, wait for it, and reversing chronic diseases. Now here in Canada, 
we don't get to use the word reversing chronic diseases at the government level. Uh, in fact, I was recently told by a member of our federal government that, you know, with all the funding that they have, which is over $22 million in funding, that they can't give that funding to organizations that work in the reversal of diabetes or the reversal of heart disease, only in the management of these diseases. So the fact that Dr. Rayapudi, Shobha Rayapudi, is actually trained in reversing chronic diseases is fantastic. The United States has a different medical system that often pushes patients to have to look for alternative options. And right now, nutrition falls under the alternative lifestyle stream. And it's not the current standard of care amongst the majority of physicians. But I do believe in all of my heart that we can get there, that we can have more and more physicians like Dr. Raya Pudi who teach food as medicine first. So she takes pride in giving her patients the choice of writing healing recipes instead of medications on a prescription pad. How cool is that? Recipes on a prescription pad instead of medications. Who would have thunk? And she also helps people create the mindset and the conditions to build healthy habits that they want but cannot attain on their own. Because as you know, making these lifestyle changes is challenging. So her partner, Dr. Arjun Rayapudi, another phenomenal human being, just like Shobha. Shobha. And he often shares with his patients, and I love this, that he's a lifestyle surgeon and he can treat you with his surgical knife or he can heal you with his chef's knife. You pick. I think that is very, very cool. And what a powerful statement. If you currently have a physician in your life that it does not believe in nutritional medicine or has not studied it or is not teaching it or is not encouraging you to use a chef's knife instead of the surgical knife to treat your condition, you might want to consider switching physicians to somebody who's been trained in lifestyle medicine and to somebody who also takes it as far as this couple does. So Arjun is also certified by the American Board of Surgery, American Board of Lifestyle Medicine, and he's also a fellow at Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. He did his surgical residency training at the University of Florida and the University of Illinois. And after at obtaining his medical degree as well from Rangaraya Medical College, he went on to get his plant-based nutrition certificate from Cornell University, and as well as the Dr. McDougall's Starch Solution Certificate. So he's working as a general surgeon at Burin Peninsula Healthcare Center, and along with his beautiful wife, Shoba, his dynamic son, and his veggie-loving dog, he resides in beautiful rural Newfoundland, Canada, like I said earlier. So without further ado, well, please welcome these two wonderful guests, and we hope to have them on the show again. As you know, anytime you listen to stories of healing like this, incredible knowledge that these two share, you know what to do. Hit share, send this podcast to somebody that you know who currently has heart disease or diabetes, because you are going to learn about what this couple did to heal Arjun's father from having to get a triple bypass surgery in as little as two weeks. So I know that some of you who've never heard about this before might be thinking that's not possible, but let's jump into the show so you can learn about how this couple did just that. So we'll see you at the end of the show. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Eat Real to Heal podcast. I am your host, Nicolette Riche, and on today's episode, we have two incredible humans on the planet. They are both physicians, and we're going to be getting into their story of how they learned all about how to eat real to heal. So we have Dr. Shoba Rayapudi and Dr. Arjun Rayapudi. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, Nicolette. Thank you, Nicole. Nic Nicolette. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here with you. You're doing amazing work. Thank you. And you are too. It was, you know, we were just chatting just before uh, we started recording here. And I just honestly, like, I, I have to give such um, 
gr uh, gratitude really to the fact that you are physicians that are practicing here in Canada and that you are able to teach people all about uh, lifestyle medicine and how to use food as medicine to not just prevent chronic disease, not manage chronic disease, but actually reverse chronic disease. And the fact that you're able to do that and still hang on to your medical license is incredible. I teach a lot of physicians around the world who are like, you can't teach that to people um, <laughs> or just don't even know that it is an, a, a topic, you know, in a, in a treatment plan. So I would love to know um, how you got into this space because you're both trained physicians, board certified physicians. How did you end up teaching lifestyle medicine? I'll let you go first. Yeah. <laughs> so we both uh, did uh, conventional medical training. We both went to med school uh, together. We met in the first year of med school and then our journey continued. I went on to become a general surgery resident and then a trained uh, general surgeon. I started working as a board certified general surgeon in uh, Buren, Newfoundland, which is a very small town uh, uh, out of uh, like the, the rural Newfoundland, very beautiful here. With no traffic lights. Yes, yeah, the, the, the town that we live, Buren, has no traffic lights. Uh, the hospital that serves a, a community of about 35,000 people. So I'm the general surgeon here, there's no gastroenterologist, so my work is very, very busy, doing gastroenterology work and doing general surgery work. And I was so busy, like right from day one, I didn't think that I was gonna be this busy. Like I, I came from University of Florida, Jacksonville. And uh, when I started here, I wasn't gonna be, I wasn't thinking that I was gonna be this busy, but it got so busy. And the, the, the thing about uh, in Newfoundland is uh, uh, I was treating uh, people with uh, advanced cancers, right? Uh, breast cancer, colon cancer. And these cancers were, uh, I was seeing patients with uh, struggling with these diseases in their even 40s and 50s, which I would I didn't see this kind of uh, uh, early uh, and aggressive occurrence of diseases where I was trained in Florida. I had some of my training in Illinois and even in back home in India. And I started to question like, you know, what's going on? Why there is so much disease and that also aggressive disease. On the other side, uh, I was also seeing so much of gastrointestinal uh, disease as well. Gallstone disease, irritable bowels and acid reflux and uh, colitis and Crohn's. Colon from, cancer. Colon cancer, like from mouth to bum, so much of GI disease, so much of cancers. And then uh, we also learned uh, around the time that Newfoundland is the number one in terms of uh, uh, people that are being overweight, people that are being obese, and um, people, th cancer. the number one in terms of uh, breast cancer, colon cancer, stomach cancer, uh, and diabetes compared to all the provinces in Canada. Um, and we were scratching our head, what's going on here? Like, uh, why is there so much disease in a place like this where the, it's so beautiful, uh, so much of untouched land, beautiful uh, uh, scenery, nature, and the air is, so pure and water is so pure. Uh, many of our colleagues were saying it's probably because Newfoundland has bad genes. It didn't make any sense. Why would a place such a pristine like this be like cursed with bad genes? It didn't make any sense, but I was so busy like cutting people open and taking the parts out and like, you know, doing scopes from above and below. I didn't think too much beyond that. Around that time, after the end of a busy day, while flipping through Netflix, I happened to see this movie called Forks Over Knives. Yes. And that changed how I looked at medicine. This movie talks about the connection between the food and the health, not just prevention, but even reversal of the, the number one killer of, uh, 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 of in, uh, in US and number two killer of, uh, in Canada, the heart disease, where people actually have their chest cut open to uh, reverse the blocked blood vessels. Dr. Carl Willis-Hilstein showed that you can reverse these clogged blood vessels with simply changing diet. That really blew my 
mind like you know if this is so true why didn't we hear about it and so i just ha- so i just have to ask and jump in there okay so here you are you're a physician you're cutting open all these people like you said from bum to mouth or yeah mouth to bum bum to mouth it's one long tube um and so you watch a documentary and i mean that documentary is priceless because every single one of my clients comes to me and says I watch forks over knives and I'm ready to change my life and I'm like that's amazing. A one and a half hour documentary, there you go. People change their life. But you're a physician, so you're were you skeptical when you saw this or was there something in it that you know woke up, I don't know, some innate part of you that probably always knew this or like I'm curious like what was your because I know a lot of physicians uh, that I've trained um, I'll get them to watch many different documentaries or even read journal articles that are published by their peers in the same field saying the same thing. And then they're like, no, that's not true. You yeah, know, so- I, actually that was our initial reaction. Oh, that's not true. How can this be true? Like, it's surprising. It sounds good. Then we had to do our work. Like, so the the main researchers, the people that were there in the documentary, Dr. Carl Willesselstein, Dr. Colin Campbell, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Neil Barnard, and then we went on and we looked at their work. We looked at their work in terms of what is published in the scientific literature. Hey, is there evidence to show that these people are just making movies, but we can't just go by movies. And then we landed uh, onto nutritionfacts.org, Dr. Michael Greger. He has like, you know, uh, gone through hundreds and thousands of nutrition research related articles. And we reviewed over thousand studies ourselves, you know, by ourselves, then coming to conclusion, hey, the evidence for reversing chronic disease with food as medicine is there. It's not just to prevent, but even to reverse. And it's been there. This is not a new concept. And it's been there for decades. It's just that we went through a medical training where the training was mostly focused on, uh, on managing treating the symptoms or managing the complications. That too, the tools that we got trained were either prescribing or cutting it out. So we are either talking about medications or surgery. So it's, uh, and then see that, that opened up like, you know, whole can of worms for us. But what ultimately it did for us was it empowered us professionally because we started, I started changing my practice in the, in the clinic. And then Shobha's background comes from research and epidemiology, clinical research, so uh, pub, public health education. So, uh, you know, from there we uh, took into teaching this to my patients in the clinic. And then we started the, you know, Gift of Health, uh, where it's a not for profit organization based in Newfoundland where we're teaching people to reverse their chronic diseases, like better manage or reverse their chronic diseases like diabetes, arthritis, acid reflux, high blood pressure, heart disease, gut diseases, reversing these diseases right from their kitchen, right in their living room with using food as medicine that allows you back. Uh, that is music to my ear. So I just want to jump in there. So um, Dr. Shoba, so when this, did you watch the documentary together and or was it separate? Like how did, what came about? I'm so curious about this because I think taking people through this story, this journey of how you opened yourself up to wanting to dive more into the research. Cause I've heard every excuse from every other health practitioner out there to say why this research is bad, why this isn't true, why you can't reverse disease, why, you know, patients don't want to make these changes. Why, you know, so I hear all the whys, whys, whys we, you know, we still need to practice conventional medicine and as we were trained in med- as you were trained in medical school. So I think helping others through this, um, you know, also not just for the patient, but for the physicians too, because I imagine when you go to med school and you devote so much time and money to this, you know, to this industry, to this profession, and then all of a sudden you're told that there was a whole nother way. Like, I'm just curious, especially with you being a researcher, like, you know, was there that... Um, you know, was there a grieving period? Was there just a complete aha liberation period? Like, what was that like for you to shift worldviews so drastically? I'm curious about that. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, Nicolette. And it's, it's very funny, actually, like how I even came to this. So one day Arjun just came home and uh, I cooked dinner uh, after a long day of hard work. And then he goes, uh, I don't want to eat this because uh, this has dairy in it. So I literally felt like choking his neck. So <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was like, okay, I understand if you don't want to eat meat and, uh, but why are you saying no to dairy? And then he goes on to explain um, about uh, this Folks Over Knives documentary and like how food impacts our health. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Like here I am finished my medical school, undergone decades of uh, training in research. And this is something that I have not heard. So, and, uh, and of course, like even since uh, as a child and even as a mother, so we feel that it's so important to give dairy to our kids, like uh, as if milk is the most nutritious thing that you can feed to your kids. And on top of that, he was saying me, okay, I, uh, I want uh, like our son Shakti also uh, not to have this. And I, I was a little bit taken aback. And uh, I was like, like, what are you talking about? And, and at that time, like I was in Hopkins and uh, like, I would say like, well immersed in research, uh, like, um, uh, like on a daily basis, I was dealing about like how to, um, I mean, do clinical trials, apply uh, for grants and uh, do the trials. And, and this is something I haven't even heard about. It. So that little bit surprised me. And when I went back and looked at the literature, I was literally shocked. Like there were papers published in 1800s where it showing that uh, like people were reversing uh, diabetes using uh, like whole, whole food plant-based eating. And even now, I mean, even today, like when we are practicing, this is something unheard of. Like we are still managing patients with the uh, drugs, with the insulin and, uh, and, and, and just trying to manage, not like even try to reverse. And of course, when we were reading in the medical textbook, the first sentence would be to manage diabetes, you have to either uh, change the diet or lifestyle. That would be the first sentence, period. And then it would list all the medications. And we, we, we used to spend like almost 600 hours reading about how to manage with medications and read about the side effects. But the diet and lifestyle would be that one sentence that we never focused upon. So, and, and you know, this is a part, and you know, and it's not to ridicule the medical industry because, you know, I often tell my clients when my clients say, well, how come my doctors haven't told me about this? And I say, well, they went to medical school and medical school, they're taught to, you know, diagnose, prescribe. Uh, and treat so you are symptom free. They're not taught how to reverse di the disease. And so it would be like, you know, hiring a plumber and saying, can you do my electrical work while you're here? Well, they can't do that. They're not certified. They weren't taught in how to do that. So why would you ask them that? So you have to go to the people who have the right training. And I just love that. Um, I mean, that you were both so open to it. This is the part that I'm so curious about from just a social science perspective too, like how do we get people to make that paradigm leap? It is like a complete shift entirely. Um, and, and what are the, you know, is it scaffolding that we need? Do they need to have little tiny itty bitty bits of information? But that's not what it seems, that doesn't seem to have happened for you. Like that was a very big leap to take off of one documentary to then want to dive into the research, um, especially after all your training, because our natural inclination as humans is when we see massive change coming, we want to resist it. Right. So we want to put up the blocks and say it's not true. We want to deny. And then, of course, it's almost like the, you know, it, it's almost like um, 
I mean, Kubler-Ross, you can agree with her, you know, stages of dying um, and grief, but it is very similar, you know, that there's that denial phase. And then of course there's a grieving and then there's later on an acceptance. And then all of a sudden it's a wholehearted, like, yeah, of course I've always believed this, but <laughs> there's another point that you brought up too, is that, cause I know when I took my pre-med sciences, it was really fascinating to have studied food as medicine, the reversal of chronic disease, metabolic nutrition, and then go in and take my pre-med sciences because in every single textbook, it says our body needs nutrients to facilitate the Krebs cycle, to facilitate, you know, the development of mitochondria, like our body needs nutrients, but it's amazing how many people um, I'll encounter who say, you know, they, they really are like, no, it doesn't work like that. Diet doesn't have anything to do with disease. And I've had many a physician write that in their oncology reports to my clients, which they send to me. And I'm like, that's amazing that, you know, but what will it take? So I'm very curious about that. And again, I just have to say, I wish we can sort of harness that out of you and have you teach people even just how to shift their perspective to want to just research further. That is the nugget that I'm really, really fascinated about. But let's back dive back in. So here you are, you're shocked, you read the research, you see it goes back a few hundred years that we can reverse these diseases. And then what happens in your, you know, your life in your home, but in your career as well after that? Yeah. So at the same time, different things were happening also. Um, at the same time, like my father-in-law who lives in India, like uh, called us with the news that his uh, heart vessels have been blocked and uh, he, ha he has been advised to uh, go for bypass surgery. So anyhow, I'll let Arjun tell the story, but uh, being brought up in India, like I was also fortunate to uh, see my grandparents and like other lead a very healthy life, which actually was uh, uh, very inspirational to me. And I especially used to feel proud because uh, at like at my age, like even today, like my grandmother is alive, but like if when I look at my friends uh, like they they don't have their grandparents alive mm -hmm. like uh, at this age so and uh, they are very active even till today like my grandmother she's 95 but she does her household activities and everything and uh, so i knew i mean uh, the diet or whatever they used to put in their mouth like whatever they used to grow. I mean, they're farmers and uh, uh, my dad's side, they used to uh, grow rice and uh, my mom's side, uh, like uh, they, they used to grow uh, different kinds of like vegetables and everything. And uh, they used to eat that kind of food. And I saw like my grandparents very strong, healthy. And uh, so in a way, like I was able to connect the dots that like food really does matter uh, and it, it does impact our health. And uh, being also brought up in India, like I was also able to see other people like where food not only influences our physical body, but also our mind, like how people are sharp, agile, depending on what they eat and whereas like even when we are eating the processed food like how lethargic we feel so there was that component too uh, and uh, so and of course like after again looking at the research that is already uh, existing and and being a researcher i was able to identify uh, based on like um, like which, which one to believe or which one not to believe. And so, so there, I mean, uh, I had the evidence. At the same time, while I was working in Hopkins, I was uh, involved in a project where I had to bring a change in the population level, not just one person. So like, and that was a change in uh, smoking, like giving up smoking. And there I was like, okay, everybody knows that smoking is harmful. 
Nobody preaches in the school or nobody tells the kids to smoke. No doctor advises you to smoke, but still people smoke. And even though we know it's harmful, some of us do uh, like t tend to go for that behavior. And so here knowledge is not the issue. So even though sometimes we know something is harmful for us or something is good for us, knowledge itself doesn't help to uh, change our habits or change our lifestyle. And that was a very big, turning point for me because I was actually happy that, oh, there is evidence that we could use this to change the lifestyle, but changing lifestyle is the most difficult thing to do. So uh, it, it, like compared to smoking, even though we know smoking is hard, it is hard to uh, give up. But think about food, like where we don't consider it's bad because it's all around us and it's uh, socially it is okay like it's okay to eat processed food it's okay to um, eat store-bought food or other things and so I could sense there that this is something very difficult to do yeah. even though it is easy I mean it is uh, I mean we don't have to spend billions of dollars to do any research or to find the cure for the cancer but like changing habits or this is something that is very difficult to do. So even though I had my aha moment of, uh, oh, this is something easy to do, but uh, I was also very quick to realize that bringing a lifestyle uh, change is very difficult to do. And I was fortunate to be trained on like how to bring that change. So I would say that really helped. And so given like Arjun's clinical experience and my experience of bringing that lifestyle change, so we could actually combine that uh, to and, uh, and uh, uh, give that to the gift of health members, which, uh, uh, which is an asset like that's why like we have been successful in bringing that lifestyle change in the people too i love you know just chatting with you is i just listened to um another one of the podcast with uh rich roll which are you familiar with rich roll yes, yes. yeah, yes. We, uh, we, yeah we, we met him and yeah oh wonderful yes so i was just listening to have you done a podcast with him yet no, okay. we haven't done a podcast. Oh, we were I'm on gonna... a cruise together. We were on a holistic holiday uh, cruise together. Amazing. So I'm going to write to him and tell him <laughs> you need to be on his podcast for sure. But just you, you just remind me and what you said there. Um, it's that combination of you know the the social sciences with the other like hard science merging those two because we can exactly like you said have all the knowledge that we need, but getting people to make those changes is tough because now we're dealing with their addictions. We're dealing with their um, emotional and spiritual and um, psychological mindsets. Um, and those are, it, it's hard to shift that, especially when people don't realize they're addicted. Um, and it's like the Shirzai team, the, uh, their two, neuro, yeah, I'm sure you yes. know them as well. Yes. Yes, but yeah. for anybody who's listening, you absolutely need to follow the Shirzai team because again, they're neurologists out there who are studying, um, you know, Alzheimer's and who announced basically we'll never find the cure for Alzheimer's through a pill, it's through lifestyle changes and diet um, and community. And, you know, the blue zones mentality with, you know, we need to have all those different factors in place, but diet is responsible for, you know, I would say, I would say definitely 90% of that, um, you know, in studies, I'm sure we might say otherwise, but I've seen the changes um, in my clients when they just change their diet, they don't change anything else in their life. And all of a sudden their disease is gone. No medications. They get to cancel their surgeries with their physicians and surgeons, but there's another, so you remind me of them because it's that merging of the sciences to understand how do we support people. But the other part that I love that you said too, it's where we are now, would you not agree is that where we were 40 years ago with smoking 
right? Where we had physicians that used to, you know, be in magazines smoking and saying smoking not only is, you know, is good for you, but it makes you look good too. And the nurses are like, the whole room is covered in smoke and they're both smiling. But it's the same thing with food where people don't realize how addicted they are to these refined processed foods. So I want to touch on that a little bit um, on how do you help your patients with the lifestyle changes? And then I also would love for you, Dr. Arjun, to tell me a little bit about, um, what, was it your father that had to go? Yes, yeah. So my surgery. once this knowledge, once this knowledge and awareness about food that came into our lives, several things happened in our personal life. Like uh, I myself, was uh, like a food addict <laughs> and uh, food has been a big part right from you know growing up and particularly I was you know so fond of all the the sugary Indian foods like the They're laddus good. is a fried dough you know <laughs> <laughs> I know them well <laughs> and the gulab jamur yeah and like you know all kinds of Indian sweets and then I was also going through a medical school and residency I was so fond of uh, the meat and the dairy products and the cheese and the meats like uh, the food for the, ca the residents and cafeteria was free so you could eat all you want and uh, going through the residency training in US it's coming from India, like just in residency training, I gained about 40 pounds going through that, like just, yeah. Uh, breakfast was like, you know, West, uh, Western omelet with eggs and, uh, uh, you know, cheese and our maybe a couple of donuts. Lunch was mesquite turkey sandwich with some fries and supper was something in Shoba would cook some nice Indian food with either chicken or fish loaded with like, if it's not fried or like, you know, oily rich is not good. So that was the type of food that uh, I was eating and like eating like a king uh, almost uh, every day. And the, my weight blew up to 220 pounds. It was not just about the weight, uh, also feeling to like the low energy and a lot of uh, stress. I thought the stress was from the work but my, I didn't realize that my lifestyle and habits were contributing to that, uh, to the stress. And uh, uh, even our relationship started to fall apart, like with me not, you know, showing up the way I should show up. Uh, like we almost lost our relationship. And one day uh, Shoba said like she was not happy with, you know, how things are. And I was looking for answers. and. Now what's going on and and luckily I came across this uh, uh, information like this happened even before folks arrives right so this, this what we're talking about is this information uh, on a, about a brochure like which talked about changing food uh, improving like the lowering stress and bringing more energy and that particular brochure only talked about switching to cutting meat out. So cutting meat out, like cutting meat out raises your energy and also improves your uh, mood. I didn't believe it at the time, but I was at a point in my life. I was like, you know, what's there to lose? I'm gonna just try cut the meat out and um, I will uh, change, see what happens. So within a week of cutting meat out, my uh, mental, Clarity was better and I had more energy. I also started exercising at that time. And uh, with that simple change in the diet, like cutting processed foods, cutting meats out and uh, increasing activity, uh, that it changed my outlook, increased energy. I've lost over 50 pounds within five months without trying. Yeah. And that made me a better uh, husband, better father and a better doctor. Later on, like after... I came with that background, like, see, I want the the the, um, the reader to, uh, like the audience to understand once you presented this Folks Over Knives thing, that documentary, what really Folks Over Knives touched upon for, uh, for me was, hey, as a first hand in my life, in my, out of my experience, I knew if I cut the processed foods and the meats, like I, there is a huge difference yeah. in my health. But once, once I start, once I changed into whole food plant-based, like cut the 
the dairy products out, cut the eggs out, cut the uh, oil out, and still be able to enjoy like all the favorite, you know, our, the foods that we grew up with. And thanks to Shobha, she's a wonderful cook. So with that, like my health even improved. I lost another 20 pounds. So overall, like I've lost from my highest weight, I've lost over 70 pounds. Wow. And I, and that has made, it has changed my life in so many ways. So I share this, like even when I'm talking to, um, when we are sharing our story, it's not just the professional aspect, hey, what the research is showing. We are speaking from experience in the sense we understand how hard it is to change. It's like we went through this ups and downs and ups and downs, but uh, we walked the journey. And uh, around the same time, like after folks when I was came into our lives, uh, my dad was diagnosed with the heart disease. Like for most of his life, he struggled with diabetes, high blood pressure and high cholesterol, which is a recipe for heart disease. And um, uh, he was having chest pain and shorts of breath. And the cardiologist said, um, he, he had an angiogram. Angiogram showed 90% uh, blockages in two out of the three main blood vessels that supply the heart. And this is a, uh, a very uh, risky uh, condition. And uh, one cardiologist said he needs to have stents. Another cardiologist said he needs to have bypass surgery, which are uh, associated with a lot of complications. And these are pretty risky procedures. And my dad's heart was in big trouble. When he shared the news uh, for the first time of his uh, heart vessels being blocked, I felt as though mine has been broken. I asked him, dad, instead of having your chest cut open, why don't you open your mouth and put different plant-based foods? And uh, he thought we are crazy, like you guys, you know, went to US, studied there, and like you're working in Canada, and you're telling me that I don't need to listen to two board certified cardiologists, I just need to change my diet. Like, and they told me, the cardiologist told me that I need to have the surgery within a week. Otherwise you could get a heart attack any minute. Yeah. I'm like, dad, this is, uh, this is the research of Dr. Silstein. Give us you know, just a couple of weeks. You don't need to have stents or bypass surgery right now. Just give us a couple of weeks. He decided to give us two weeks to try. Within the two weeks, he was walking longer distances with no shots of breath, with whole food, plant-based eating, uh, longer distances he was walking and uh, chest pain, no more chest pain. And his blood sugar control was so good that his doctor has to cut his diabetic pills by 50% in two weeks. Exactly. And then within three months, he continued the journey. He came off of diabetic medications, blood pressure medications, cholesterol medications that he was taking for over 25 years. Yeah. And he, he could even finish the heart treadmill stress test that he could not even finish before. And this happened uh, actually six years ago, as we are speaking in March, like uh, it happened in 2015, March. So it's, it's been over six years. Uh, I just spoke to uh, my parents today. We are celebrating uh, the, the new year of uh, like uh, uh, our culture. It's called Ugadi. He's doing well no stents, no bypass surgery. So we're lucky, so lucky to have him with full health. That's amazing. And, um, with his, and he's into 70, he's 72 now, and is mentally, he's more agile. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that happened, you know, in our personal lives, this knowledge came in and we combined all of our personal expertise and passion. And with, uh, you know, Shobha was talking about how to bring about a change and, uh, you know, the, the, she tells us, tells it beautifully, like the three ingredients for change. You know, you want to take it from there? Or? <laughs> so, so before we, before we, I want to hear that because our, our listeners need to hear this. They, and I love it that it's just three because really it just needs to be simple because it is, it is so simple that people make it way more complicated. So one, one of the things that I definitely have to say is I can hear that, you know, our audience saying, well, that was easy for you to do because now, I mean, I'm Indian and African. I grew up in a village that, I mean, we grew our own food and I didn't, I was too little, but my, our, all the villagers grew the food and would pick it 
20 minutes before cooking it and it was in abundance, like mangoes falling off the tree. You just eat, if you want to eat two bites and throw it into the garden and, you know, have it compost, you could because there was just a million more mangoes. So people would say, well, you already know how to do that because a lot of the people that come to our wellness center from all over North America, they'll show up and I'll hold up a potato or a, you know, yam or a leek or a cabbage and they don't know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, for me, easy, because I grew up eating out of a garden. Um, but for your dad, like, I'm really curious about this because you told him, like you said, listen, if you cut out the meat, cut out the dairy, um, stop using the refined oils, you know, which meant that obviously staying away from the sweets in India, because a lot of them are all deep fried. So, and samosas and pakora, like everything is deep fried. So, <laughs> so how was that change? Like, was it a pretty easy transition for him to do that? In the beginning, it was a bit hard. But yeah. what really helped was like, both of us, we were speaking to my mom over the phone almost like you know every day giving her tips like because we already did it at, in our house yeah. how to make all the like even the 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 samosas even the like the fried foods and the sweets without using the refined ingredients so what my mom was able to do was create recreate the the tastier the the healthier versions of all my da dad's favorite foods without losing. So there was no sense of uh, deprivation. Okay, good. So he was enjoying the food. It's actually more flavorful because when you cut out the refined ingredients, you are adding like with mo the, and cutting the refined oils, the flavors of the food that come out. Mm -hmm. That's so he started, the, there was no loss in taste of like, there was no compromise there in that term. And the other thing that happened was like, my dad's body was telling him that he was doing right because within two to three days, his blood sugar started coming down. Yeah. And within you know, a few days, as I shared, like he was walking longer distances with no short support. Like the, that was a huge thing. Like I, dad, I, I saw my dad growing up with like, you know, pricking his fingers with, to check his blood sugars almost on a daily basis. And it was a frustration for him to maintain normal sugars, like seeing diabetologists, the endocrinologists, like seeing the dietitians and like following their recommendations and still like struggling with making you know, good blood sugar control. But here within two weeks, his blood sugar was were better. So basically uh, the change became easier because his body was giving him the feedback that the foods that he's eating are loving him back. Yeah. And he's also like, uh, my, where my mom was, uh, I would say the, well, the real yeah. hero was also preparing the foods without losing yeah. the, the taste. So, so, like, uh, so uh -huh. go, I go have ahead. to ask one question about that. So do you think that your dad would have made those same changes 10 years before if you had given him the same information? Or do you think he had to get the feedback from his doctors saying he had 90% blockage and he needed a triple bypass surgery? That's a tricky question. That's it, see, because we, we can't specific. Well, my dad, I had some discussions with my dad before about changing his diet, but he was not so, so open before. But here, uh, and also uh, we, we were just beginning to learn this plant-based eating as well ourselves with the folks over and everything. And uh, it is hard to change the, the lifestyle, the diet and lifestyle. And it is also hard to change uh, your own parents or your own family members. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the strangers are more likely to listen they to us, are. but, <laughs> you know, but when this situation happened here, you have a choice of either having your chest cut open or open your mouth and put, simply put, you know, whole food, plant-based foods and without losing the, the the taste yeah i mean i i would just add one thing so to your question nicolette uh i mean the diagnosis of heart disease did really uh, make an impact or gave the impetus to change so without that uh yeah i would say like uh we hardly would want to change the yummy foods we are eating so that that diagnosis uh, really gave the impetus and also like uh, I know like uh, 
my my father in law like had we asked him to change it would have been difficult but since my mother in law is the one like who cooks and she is an amazing cook so such a talented cook so even when like when we said okay like we have to change the cooking style like without using oils without like deep frying the foods and uh, so she was very quick to catch on so and even cutting out the dairy was a big thing like yeah, because a, indian a, foods are yeah, loaded with dairy dairy yogurt so like cutting out those things uh, and also obviously the sweets and uh, everything but because like my mother in law was cooking it was not my father in law like who had to cook or make the change so i would say that's why it was a little bit successful because uh, um my mother in law was doing that and uh, the other thing that actually helped was uh, not trying different foods so just trying the foods that we grew up with as you said like okay so when you had things in your ba- backyard and like you're just cooking with those things so here also uh when we were able to tell them that they don't have to give away their favorites they can still have their favorites but here you're just replacing that with healthy ingredients you're just picking the processed flowers your refined grains but you're using the whole intact grains the whole lentils beans to make the same dishes so whatever dish you are choosing and uh, instead of dairy you're using plant based milk so when we were able to tell them that you could just substitute with actually a richer ingredient rather than like using processed ingredients so that made life easier and um, my mother in law was like okay this is something doable because where yeah. we don't want to lose the taste of the food and everything exactly yeah and that is important right because we for majority of people in north america they've grown up with french fries and burgers and ketchup and you know and milkshakes and all of those things and you still can have a lot of those things and have them be actually 10 times tastier in fact um and so you know and the other thing too that i find is when people do make the shift to then they realize well i don't have to have a burger like they can have a beautiful lentil and rice dish even though those same ingredients would be in the burger and then they realize like oh, okay there's so many combinations of foods we could use in so many different ways and it just opens up people um definitely to the plethora like i always say it's not about elimination it's about bringing more diversity into your life as well and it opens you up in so many beautiful ways so um one of the things that i want to ask you though is because you know you're in canada now teaching this where you know we don't have a mom at home or a dad at home that stays and cooks and you know or who comes home necessarily at the end of a 10 or 12 hour day and wants to whip up a delicious healthy meal for their family so how are you working with your patients then and teaching your community how to do this because it is a very different lifestyle that we have compared to africa or india that's a beautiful question nicolet yes cooking is a skill and uh, and here people uh, one thing is uh, we don't have time like even like when we are working and doing so we do want to have uh, something very quick to make as well as uh, delicious and at the same time like uh, recognizing uh, what people love here and what people like here so even like um, in the beginning so we just took typical newfoundland foods so that's that's what we showed them and how to cook so we have this 5 minute breakfast system and 10 minutes uh, meal system where they don't have to spend too much time yet like have those uh, delicious meals so just to give you an example uh, so we just tell them okay like if you can take 5 minutes to prepare your breakfast like using uh, five ingredients where you're just putting the whole grain milk you're adding fruits and uh, just to flavor either you're using uh, uh, cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice and 
uh, if you want, you can use some dried fruits and there you have your delicious breakfast. So when we were able to show them like how to put together like quick soups, salads, just using few ingredients and which are easy to cook where not much time is taken, then it became easy and they said, okay, this is something do doable. Like even if I don't know cooking, this, this is something that I can put together. Right. So and in, I just want to add yeah. a couple of things to what uh, Shobha just uh, shared. Uh, like for the people in North America, like we, we, have, we grew up like, uh, we say more than half of our life we spent in North America now, like either in, North, in US or Canada. So we understand the culture, the lifestyle here. So we actually started with foods that are local to here. Hey, you want to eat fries? You want to eat burgers? You want to eat pizzas? No problem. You want to eat sandwiches? Let's do it. So we actually took all these, uh, the recipes that people are familiar with. We basically plantified them. Plantifying yeah, is, is, yeah, plantifying is where we created a healthier version of it. So you don't miss any of these foods. Like, hey, sometimes eating a salad, if you're easy, used to eating fries and burger is boring. For, yeah. So yeah, let's start with fries. Let's start with burger, but let's make it with healthy ingredients. And then naturally, like as your palate improves and like as your taste buds change, you will crave, your body will actually crave for healthier foods. Like it happened in our lives. We share like, you know, 10 years ago, we used to wake up in the middle of the night and like crave for chips. 12, yeah. 12 <laughs> yeah. Like you know, chips or fries or chicken biryani. biryani. Yeah. And now at the, you know, we, we crave for hey, where is our salad? Like, you know, now we- Or, know, or, or those crispy vegetables. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, we are a living testament how we have experienced how our taste buds actually change and look forward to eating more and more healthy. Uh, so it's uh, coming back to this, this, the whole idea of change. It depends not only on the knowledge, but also the, the skills, your ability to prepare these, these, these delicious foods in a, in a, in a, you know, without breaking you know, too much time, without breaking your back. And then also having the support. And that's what we created in the gift of health model is, you know, we've distilled all the science, we've distilled all of person experience and we have created in-person program, like where we were teaching this as a weekend workshop. Right. People would come in, in just three days, they would get to taste over 60 different foods. Wow. 60 different foods in just three days. And we had actually people coming from BC yeah. Uh, and uh, California, Chicago, Florida, all parts of uh, uh, US come to Buren to participate in that, uh, in that three day workshop. It was highly successful. And then uh, as you were familiar, like CBC TV made a documentary called Plantify and, and that, that became widely popular as well in Canada. And with COVID came, uh, that was a you know, good time like for us. We, we've been able to achieve all the results for our students of reversing chronic disease, getting off of medication treadmill, losing weight, or gaining you know, more energy. We were able to do whatever the in-person participants got. We were able to give them how to do this right from their comfort of their yeah. living room and kitchen without traveling to Buren in an online format. Yeah, that's an important thing too. I think, you know, with all the downsides of COVID, I think this move to digital technology, you know, some people had never used Zoom before uh, COVID. And I was like, <laughs> Zoom has been part of my life for so many years, but, um, you know, being able to offer that definitely online. I do look forward to when we can do it in person. Cause I know when people, we also teach a three-day retreat, a five-day retreat, and then people can come for as long as they want as well. But in that three-day retreat, people come in on that first day and on the last day, they feel like your best friends. Like they feel yeah. they're crying when they're leaving. They're like, thank you so much. And, you know, I'm thanking them for like bringing this gift back to their family when they go home. And, and there is something about that connection that I really do miss, but that is the beauty of it is that you can do this in your own home. I mean, I did a cooking class with, um, 
Julie Pyatt and where she had people from all over and we just made all these gorgeous plant-based Italian dishes because I don't really cook a lot of Italian food and it was so much fun and we all ate together online and it sounds weird to say like we ate together online but we did and it <laughs> you know we had all these families from all over the world connected and it is such a beautiful thing and the part that I love about what you said to like that really goes back to your dad's story is the fact that a in three days, you can learn how to make over 60 different dishes, right? So there's no excuse. It's not like you need to invest years into understanding this, learning about this. In three days, you can get the science, the recipes, the skills in the kitchen. And also you can get the results in a few days as well. Like you said, with your Absolutely, dad. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Yeah, like, we, like just within those three days to give you an example, like people were amazed that they were seeing the weight loss and uh, and not just like just to like, give you a story like you know the one person uh, who came to us his name was uh, john and he was in 60s and he had so many health issues and we were worried how he's he was even a get from the parking lot into the the the, the classroom the, the classroom yeah. right so uh, and um, he was already on uh, 18 different medications for diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, heart disease. He already had stents before. He was on insulin, uh, arthritis of the knees and back, like you name it, like you name it disease and he's, he's got <laughs> oh, it. Yeah. Like, I've uh, had lots of clients yeah. like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> within three days, right? Like uh, after eating the whole, the plant-based foods that we served at the at the, at the even before three days on the second day second day yeah, yeah his blood sugar work came down to single digits like in canada we are following the canadian system like his blood sugars were usually in like you know up uh teens and 20s wow. within two days his blood sugar came to like single digits and this is the first time he said it was in single digits in over 10 years and that really changed his perspective on the day third when he was going home he was literally, he was in tears and he, he, he stopped taking his medications for acid reflux. He, is, he already had to drop his insulin dose within those three days and he continued the journey. And within three months, he came off of 80% medications, off of all insulin and he lost over 35 pounds in three months and uh, more energy and he was walking like a champ by end of six months, he was walking 10 kilometers every day. Whereas when he came to us, like the first day, he was barely able to come from the parking lot into the, uh, the hall. He was walking 10 kilometers every day and he, he had happy problems. He had to give away all his old bigger clothes because he's lost over 60 pounds in like six months and he's, yeah. he's got a new lease on life. We had similar stories of transformation, just not just in person, but several even online. Like we had people and technology, talk about the technology, right? We were worried how these 60 year olds, 70 year olds and 80 year olds, like even yeah. sometimes even 50 year olds are like, you know, uh, age doesn't matter. Some people are resistant to technology, right? But yeah. we had an 84 year old who did the course, online course from Ontario. And he, he came off of his like, you know, blood pressure medications within the six weeks that he was taking for a long time. So. Yeah, uh, and I'll just share a story about that just for our audience as well, because I mean, you're hearing it from two certified, you know, um, you know, board practitioners here. And the thing is, is that for myself, you know, people always say like, what's your certification? And I was like, well, I've only been studying this for 25 years, but because it's not in with a medical degree, then some people are like, I don't believe you. So I'm like, that's fine. Like I can hook you up with, you know, how many doctors do you want? How many physicians do you want? Do you want 30, 40, 60? I'll introduce you to all of them. They'll tell you the same thing. You can reverse your disease by making these, and they are simple lifestyle changes, but at the same time, knowing that it is hard to change our habits, but it's doable. People are doing it everywhere. But I'll, one of my clients, her husband um, decided to do the program, but didn't tell me. And usually I have to ask like, who in your family is on medications? We need to know this because if you're all going to be eating this way, we have to manage your medications because you need to titrate them down actually quite quickly. He didn't believe me. So he just went back and he was 
he was doing all the cooking. So he would make the food for his partner who was doing the therapy because she had a whole host of illnesses. And sure enough, she called me and she's like, my husband's in the hospital. And I was like, what? Why is your husband in the hospital? Well, he had been on blood pressure meds, lowering meds for 20 years. And of course, after three or four days, what happened is his blood pressure, because he still was taking the medications, but wasn't managing them in relationship to his new diet and lifestyle, well, his blood pressure dropped so low that he put himself into a merge. And the doctors were like, why are you taking these medications? You don't need them. He's like, but I've been taking them for 20 years. And so that's it. No more medications for him. And it can happen so fast that people need to know, like if you're on thyroid medications, antidepressants, if you're on fertility drugs, if you're on, um, you know, it, like diabetes meds, if you're on heart disease meds, you do have to manage those meds when you make, when you, once you make these lifestyle changes, like if you're going to dive in, make sure your doctor knows what you're doing and your doctor might not believe you. They're going to be like, that's not going to happen. Um, but they do have to, you might have to reduce your meds actually quite quickly within the first few days to first few weeks for sure. Cause it, the results happen so fast. Yes, so so true. Like, and yeah. we have witnessed this many times, and that is one of the first things that we share with all the new online course participants is that what the one of the first criteria is that they see continue to see their family doctor and work with their doctor within days of changing this to to this diet, and we recommend them they have a visit with them within a week or two. Sometimes they need to, you know see and be in touch with them even sooner than that. Uh, it's just amazing how quickly our body starts to heal uh, once we you know, start putting the, the right foods into the body. Exactly. So I know that we've been together for a while, so I just want to make sure we dive in. We need to know these three actions that you could take. What needs to be in place to be able to make this successful for somebody? And I know you guys, I love that it's three and it's not five or eight <laughs> or 10 things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so we, we often uh, tell our participants like to make any change, you just need this three ingredients. And even if one of the ingredients is missing, you won't be able to make it sustainable. So, so the first ingredients is we have to have the knowledge. I mean, uh, knowledge about the food, like what foods hurt your body and what foods actually love you back. And then- Sure, I want to, can we just stay on that? But like, can we sure. go one at a time? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So we need to dive into this. So yeah. many, because there are so many gaps in knowledge. Yes. yes. Many people have so many gaps related to what is healthy to eat, what is unhealthy to eat. And almost like, especially when you, when we suggest people that, you know, consider eating going plant-based, everybody becomes a nutrition expert. Mm -hmm. But when you're eating French fries and chips and drinking Coke, nobody cares. <laughs> so there are so many gaps, like the knowledge gaps, like, you know, is uh, eating, um, uh, like dairy, is it good for you? Are you eating you no know, meats? You know, what's wrong with uh, meat? What's wrong with like chicken? I thought eating chicken is okay. You know, oh, I heard that like, you know, if I eat uh, soybeans that I'll, I'll develop like, yeah. you know, breast cancer. Become like a uh, breast cancer. So, so many knowledge gaps are there. Like uh, having knowledge about food and also having knowledge about the body itself how the body, because see many, many people like have bachelor's degree or master's degree about science and physics and chemistry and, uh, you know, all kinds of engineering, all, but we don't delve too much about how does our body work? How does our mind work? What is the connection between the body and the mind? So there are gaps about the food there are knowledge gaps about the body and there are knowledge gaps about the mind. how our mind works. Yeah. We, we focus on these knowledge gaps. Like once we, because then only when we have the clarity about like, you know, what food, uh, how our body works and what foods love us back, then we go into the second ingredient. Yeah. So the second ingredient is having the skills to do it. So like, even though we might have a strong why or a strong reason, like why we want to change this lifestyle, we do need the skills. Yeah. So here, like how, like how to cook, how to shop, how to read the nutrition label, how to deal with the family situations or social events mm -hmm. or how, 
how to navigate any parties or yeah. social events. And if I'm going out, if I'm uh, eating out at restaurants, so how do I deal? And if I'm traveling, so like this are all the skills that you want in place to, uh, like when you're transitioning to uh, this lifestyle. So that is the second ingredient. And, and the third, it's a very important ingredient which not a lot of people pay attention. It's the support. Mm -hmm. especially like when we are making a change uh, it's it's a very intimidating situations because we are the only ones doing but no one around us is doing or approving or acknowledging so support becomes very crucial and also as social beings when we do things together it it actually has a very um what what you you, you basically like gain the gain the momentum and the energy yeah. from the group exactly yeah, yeah so the support in terms of the fellow group members and also the support from a guide or a coach who can actually navigate you through the obstacles or the challenges because hey changing as we have said again and again changing diet and lifestyle is hard yeah. and it's similar to like driving or swimming like you know if you want to swim you can't jump, you know, hey, I have the willpower. I'm going to just, just jump into the pool, start swimming. No, first you're yeah. going to learn how to use the hands and then how to use the legs and how to breathe. And then within a few days, you'll learn how to swim. And if you have a coach, uh, do you think you, you know, you'll get there faster? Yeah. So and be more efficient, uh, be more efficient yeah. as well, like learning all these little tricks. I do love what you said about all three of those aspects, because, um, you know, over the years since I've been doing this, I started teaching uh, metabolic nutrition about 15 years ago. And when a friend of mine, her dad um, was diagnosed with stage four cancer and he turned to food as medicine, he was offered no other treatment for him. He was 72 years old at the time. He was given three months to live. He changed his diet fully to plant-based whole food. And this is 25 years ago now he did this. Plant-based whole food, SOS free, so no refined salt, sodium, um, high in potassium, but no refined sodium, no refined oil, no refined sugars, and all organic. We thought he was crazy. And, you know, at the time watching him, and it was weird because we ate what we thought was healthy. Like, I know that your clients and patients say this to you. Oh, but I already eat so healthy. Like, yeah. Every oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I know. And then we show them and then they're like, oh yeah, I was not healthy at all. Like, and so, and so, you know, so we watch and we're like, oh, his food looks so similar to ours, but it was full of the oils, the salts, the sugars, you know, our foods were, and of course it had dairy and it had meat sometimes. Um, and it really, that really makes a fundamental difference. And he ended up living 22 more years. He died at 94, stage wow. four cancer, fully reversed. And his oncologist in the States and Canada, because he had dual citizenship, couldn't believe it. But of course, they didn't really ask any questions, which was kind of sad. But the thing is, is that with what I've learned since teaching my clients is number one, that support system is crucial. So what we do is we say, when I'm working with a client, I say, hey, by the way, can you invite all your family to the session? And ours is a three hour session where we teach them like online how to do everything. And, but invite all your family. And if you have friends that are going to be coming by for dinner, invite them too, because I don't need any of them coming in being like, but you don't get enough protein in that when you eat yeah. plant <laughs> and you know, cause then of course, then my clients are left to be like, oh, right. But where, where is the protein? And they forget, you know, that we taught them that it's everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's so important to have everybody, number one, speaking the same language, having the same skills. Cause you, you can have somebody in your family be like, well, I'm going to put together a plant-based burger, but then they load it full of tons of you know, the oil, the salt, the sugars, the everything. And all of a sudden it's not a healthy meal anymore. So it's so important that the, everyone speaks the same language, has similar skill sets. And then of course, everybody's super excited to do it together. And of course, the reason I do it, it's because I know if that one family member that came to me first has a chronic disease, I can guarantee because chronic disease, diseases or lifestyle diseases, all the family members have something. 
So in mm -hmm. one person, it might be diabetes, but in like, you know, the aunt, the uncle, the sister, the brother, it might show up as arthritis or it might show up as, you know, head to toe psoriasis or it might show up as migraines or depression. So they all have something. And so by healing one person, you heal the entire family, mm -hmm. which is so important. So I can't stress that enough. If you are working with a nutritionist or a doctor, ask if your family members can attend. Just ask that question and then everybody's getting the the knowledge it's so so important so like you, you brought up a beautiful point nicolette even like when we were doing the workshop we actually asked the spouse to come so yeah. like we we actually encouraged like uh, people to sign up as a group rather than an individual which uh, and and as i said that's a beautiful point you brought up yeah, and it does I don't want to leave everything. out the people like you know who said, "Oh, I can't join as a, a group member or a." But it's it's totally fine. Like we have had several people who embarked on this journey on their own, mm -hmm. and then within few days to weeks, we have seen the family members following them along. So exactly. don't be discouraged. Like if you want to make the change, and if you don't have the necessary support in the family, that there are virtual supports out there so you know use the virtual support and get started and all the people and the family members who are asking you in the beginning uh, you know what the hell you're doing and uh, within <laughs> two days two weeks they'll be asking hey hey how, how, are, how you are, doing? are you doing can you tell me give me some tips so it exactly. happened again and again Exactly. And I love that you brought that up too, because, and it is a ripple effect. It's huge and it happens fast. So for us, our campaign, you know, where I'm going to be running and cycling across Canada, it's called 22 million strong because we want to help 22 million people, not just learn about how to reverse their diseases, but actually reverse their chronic lifestyle diseases. So 22 million people by 2030. We're not going to get there on our own, but, you know, we're going to be doing it through working with, you know, organizations like yours and Solomon and Lululemon who've sponsored us. And now we're training their staff on how to do this. And of course we do the same thing. When we train their staff, we say, please bring your partner to the session as well. So that, you know, now we're maximizing, you know, the number of people, but with this 22 million people say why 22 million and it represents 10 percent of the north american population that currently has a chronic disease and we know if we just help one person they will inspire 10 other people to make these changes as well so that's how we're going to get that ripple effect and you know what i love about these three pieces is that like you said they have to go together right like they are the three stools the three legs of a stool they all need to be in place otherwise the stool falls over um and it's a concept of sustainability right like you know this is what's going to make you do this and make it last it's not just a and i'm sure you're and i don't know i get this question all the time but i'm curious do your patients say how long do i need to do this for <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, that comes up uh, so often. Yeah. Yeah. So we we say like you're not going on a diet to think like how long the like this is a lifestyle. This is a permanent change that you are doing it for better. So. And so, we also say some most of the time we don't actually uh, use the words like uh, you have to do this forever. Yeah. You know, once first first they come with an open mind. Like one of the things that we suggest once people start on this journey is that you only have two things we need from you is have an open mind and have an open mouth, right? So just be willing to try the dishes without making any face. If you have three, only all you have to do is have three bites of the food and 80%, 90% of the time you like end up liking the dish. So with that open mind and open mouth, we are creating a lifestyle that you'll enjoy. This is not a diet because all diets fail. Yeah. All diets fail. Even a plant-based diet, if you approach this as a diet, it will fail. So we, we want to change your mindset around food as food, as a nourishing, like a, as a fuel for our body and filling our body with the foods that love us back. So it's a, it's a, it's a change in like a little bit of thinking and the mindset. And after... What we found is after the initial first few days to weeks, once you know what foods to eat and what foods to avoid and you have some skills, it becomes a mindset issue. So for what we, after training hundreds of our students in the either in-person and online format, we recognize that 
um, about 50% of the people, for 50% of the people who are starting this journey, just the knowledge, having the knowledge and the skills will do it. But there are about 50% of the people who have uh, emo uh, e issues around emotional eating, stress eating, food addictions. Like, and, and for these people, you need even more support. This is something that I would say uh, it was a huge breakthrough even in our professional work. Uh, and we are more equipped to deal with it even five years ago when we started doing in-person workshops. Now, we created a six-week program, online six-week program. And for this is where people are learning to use food as medicine. And for people who have need more support and ongoing learning, we have created a six-month program six-month program where we both uh, are both certified lifestyle medicine doctors. Like this is a new emerging field. It's uh, called lifestyle medicine. And we got uh, board certified through lifestyle medicine and where we're teaching other pillars other than food. Yeah. Hey, food is important, but how about increasing physical activity? Yeah. How about learning to manage stress in healthy ways? And you know, focusing on getting healthy sleep managing good connections with ourselves and people around us and then avoiding harmful risky substances yeah. which again when we say harmful risky substances many people think of smoking and tobacco but excess food that you don't need is a harmful substance yeah food is medicine yeah but excess food is poison yeah I unnecessary food is poison up. slow poison so this is what we have uh, harnessed into creating a six month mentorship program. So it is a, it's been a learning process for us as well. Like we grew uh, so much like in helping people, bringing these tools to them. It, we, had to, we had to upgrade and learn for ourselves as well. Well, exactly. And, you know, and it is a journey, you know, as we've seen through the research, you know, we've seen that margarine was once healthy in the research, considered healthy. And then we saw that, you know, oh, it wasn't healthy, but butter is. And then we see that butter's not. And then we see that eggs are and eggs are not, you know, but the one thing that has been consistent um, through the research is the fact that our body needs nutrients from whole foods. Like the research is consistently saying, get a diversity of nutrients, even for some communities that maybe it's not a diversity. Maybe you're only eating cabbage and potatoes and sweet potatoes and, you know, carrots and things like that. Maybe but it, the, the concept is that the whole food is what is important. So that has been consistent throughout the ages and not, and you know, that's within the published research and beyond that, we can see it through the, um, you know, through the po mass population observations, you know, like even my village in Africa that has relatively zero disease, um, you know, lifestyle chronic diseases, communal diseases, maybe, um, but, you know, the lifestyle chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease and cancers are just not prevalent there. Um, so we can see that. So one question I have for you is being a physician, being physicians, you are both physicians, when a patient comes into your office and you see, you know, you can see they might be skinny. So I'm not saying observation that they have to be overweight to have the disease because we also know there's the fat, we call it fat skinny syndrome, um, you know, where people's arteries are still clogged, even though they're fit and they're running marathons. So when you see people with lifestyle diseases, how do you approach that? because I'm sure when they come to you, not all of them, you know, are, are ready to hear that they have to change their lifestyle. So how do you approach this as a physician? And are, are you doing 10 minute appointments, 45 minute appointments? How are you managing this? Because I know there's other health professionals out there saying, well, you know, the patient just wants the medication and we also don't have time to really get into it with them. So what does your practice look like? Two, yeah, we, we have two, two practices right now. Like one is uh, I'm working as a full-time surgeon in the hospital. Okay. So that's where I'm getting all the consults for people to see me for surgical issues and gastrointestinal issues. That's one place where we are seeing patients. Then the other place where we are seeing patients is online, like where Shobha and I, through our organization called Gift of Health, we are seeing people online. So online like these people when they come to see us 90 percent of them are for like lifestyle medicine programs right. where people can work either one-on-one -on -one with us or as a group program whereas in person like is mostly through the through the hospital right. 
what we are finding is like when people come to see us in the beginning, how do we approach the lifestyle? It's, it totally depends upon where they are. We have to get a sense of where they are, like how willing and ready to they uh, are, are these two change. Like there are some people who are on the sidelines, yeah. who are on the sidelines where they've heard about plant-based eating and they just, uh, you know, but not too, too excited about it. They just want to, you know, check it out. Then uh, we cater them to them with like more awareness to, so that like they, from the sidelines, they come to like more of a fast track where, right. hey, I'm ready to change. Give me the tools. For that, like, you know, if you're ready to change, give you the tools. We have, the, we have created a whole process and steps like, okay, this is, the, this is where you start and like understanding with the, how the body and the mind works and then also understand the foods that you love. What are the foods that you love? And then, then we look at how do we plantify these things so that you don't miss your favorites. Okay, now you know how to do them at home, or, you know, plantify them at home and eat this lifestyle. How do we do it even when you're traveling? So, because away from home as well, and then how to get family members on board and how to deal with cravings. So we're going stepwise manner uh, for people who want to start, but for people who are just want to check it out, for them, we are creating more uh, awareness programs. Like, and, the, and we, in that part, like we really appreciate what you're doing, uh, Nicolette. Like it's amazing the work that you have taken upon to bring this uh, gift of health, a uh, real food. I think, I think our missions are pretty, you know, similar. Very much aligned. Yeah. <laughs> Very much yeah, similar to like 22 million people across North Can North America and uh, Canada. Like this is just amazing. So we need more awareness programs. What we're doing is like, uh, we also are doing a, a weekly wellness chat on our gift of health uh, platform where it's free for people to come and uh, listen to us attend. We are bringing uh, like experts from different fields of lifestyle medicine to share different topics. So uh, there are people like, you know, if they're on the sidelines, they're like, you know, I'm not sure. There are supports to get them more interested for a, uh, to make a change for their own health improvement. Yeah. I mean, uh, like you said, it's so beautiful. And just to add to that, Nicolette, whenever it comes to uh, bringing the lifestyle change in patients and when patients come to us, I know this is the most important question as a doctor we have, like how we can help them. And sometimes we have the tendency, like we want to give them all. Uh, and, but here, uh, like what would help is just to see where the patient is and just give enough for them to take in so that they will be able to do it rather than being overwhelmed. So right. this is something like if they have not thought about, they don't know about plant-based eating, but there you could just plant a seed. Okay, if you're having high blood pressure, did you know that like there is something that you could do about it. So just where you're planting the seed. So they would be curious, okay, maybe like without going on medications for lifelong, maybe there is something that I can do. And also hearing them like, because always we do things based on our cost benefit analysis. And this is the same for the patient too. Like whatever they're doing at this current stage is based on what they believe in, what they know. And if we can meet them there as a doctor, that actually is a very crucial step, which it would is. help many physicians out there. So just uh, seeing where they are and giving what they need. And then like you can take them step by step. Yeah, and this it's, is it's an not important just... point. Yeah. Well, just I just wanna say that that is such an important point. It's the ability to listen and observe and see and not make assumptions, right? Because if we go in with a client and assume, well, oh, they're not going to be doing this. Like I've had 
you know, meat eating, you know, um, you know, cowboys come to me and they have an illness and they're like, oh, you want me to cook plant-based? No problem. Like, you know, so we can make these assumptions around people, whether they're willing to or not, or where they're at. And it's that ability to also ask questions to, you know, we need to be better listeners and we need to ask more questions. And th then just to see, because when you can meet someone where they are, I tend to be on the opposite end because the people are coming to me and they're like, uh, I have surgery to maybe amputate my leg um, coming up. You know, my doctor said, I might have a heart attack within a couple of weeks. Um, I need to make the change now. My clients are a little bit more willing to do it because they've, I, I often say they've hit their rock bottom. They're like, they can't go any lower um, with their health. You know, their mental state is at its absolute worst. So they're like, okay, fine. Like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And for me, it's a lot easier. So I'm not out there necessarily, um, in the same position as you, where the person's maybe just first getting diagnosed, or maybe where they've been on medications for a long time, there's such a there's such a spectrum there that you can you know I play like let's just play together and let's see. But ob observing and listening is really one of the key things that physicians absolutely need to do well with their patients, so that they can you know nudge them along. Yes, yeah. I think that's an important uh, thing that you said, like nudging them along with an open mind. Because one of the things that we hear even among physicians is a belief, a limiting belief that our patients don't change. Yeah. And that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy when we are approaching our patients with that. Like we approach them with an open mind yeah. and give them the necessary information and not just the information, also boost their confidence by sharing some stories and stories of people that who are in their shoes and may, you know, who made changes and to, uh, to inspire them even like uh, to, to make the, to make the change. I've had patients uh, who, who with in my clinic appointments, like 15 minute clinic appointment. And then uh, I've had this lady like, you know, after an appointment with me, I didn't see her for almost eight months. She came to see me for uh, a gallstone disease and she had like a gallstone she needed she she was struggling from that and she was way overweight at a very very high risk to do any surgery at the time like uh because of her, uh, the body mass index was 55 that's like the normal body mass index is 25 uh, the overweight is 30 35 is you know morbid obesity and now we're talking about super super obesity struggling with gallstones and i i had this you know, talk with her like you know, how to how the gallstones are due to the food and how she could um, change food use food as medicine to prevent these attacks and how she could even you know, lose weight and if she wants to go for surgery make uh, it as a safer surgery and actually I, I didn't see her for the next eight months and I completely forgot about her and she came back as like eight months later to my clinic and I couldn't recognize her. And uh, she was a totally changed person and she has lost over 80 pounds. And uh, I couldn't, as I said, I couldn't recognize her. And I asked like, you know, what changed, what happened? And like, she said, I don't know what happened, but when I left your office that day, you know, something, uh, you know, you kicked me on my butt or something. <laughs> this is, these are the words that she used. And uh, so I, I feel like, as a physicians are like, you know, healthcare, um, I mean, I consider like whether you're a physician or not, like if you're helping people to make lifestyle changes, we're all in this together. Yeah. And um, we have enormous power to influence each other with the way we are, with our behavior, with our lifestyle changes, with our openness, we have enormous power to, to make a change. We do. Yeah. And, and humans are amazing. They're always surprising me every single day, like, you know, that they can make these changes. Every time I get a client who calls me and sometimes it's, you know, I don't see them for eight months too. Same thing. They don't call. I'm like, oh, okay, well, they might not be doing it. And then they come back and they're like, a brand new person off their meds, their doctors have cleared them of, of everything. And um, I'm always so shocked. Like, and I know this works right? Like, I know this works. It's almost sometimes like with diabetes too. Somebody has type two diabetes. I often will say like, if you do this, like I would pay you a million dollars to do this and have it not work. 
Like it would almost be impossible to have it not work because it's just basic biochemistry. It's that you give your body the, the things that it loves. You stop giving it the things that it hates. You remove all those roadblocks and the body cannot help itself to heal because it is a self healing machine since the day that sperm hit the egg, it became a self healing machine. And so it's impossible almost, you know, and not to say it works for everybody in every single case, there's some diseases that are trickier, and they need like a few additional things here. And they, you know, so there are, you know, but it's rare with these really, they, these leading killers, the heart disease and the type two diabetes. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's sometimes hard to not make to not get results, like if you're not doing it. So, you know, so, but every time I'm just like, I almost want to cry because it's not that it worked. It's just that the person put themselves first and that they were open-minded. They came in, they were willing to give it a try. They tried it, they got the results and they kept going. Like, I'm just amazed at the human capacity to change and to try something new. It's phenomenal. It is phenomenal, especially in a world where we've been taught that there's no connection between diet and disease for the most part, when we've been taught that you just take a pill and that's the only way to treat it. We've been taught that, you know what, if you get diagnosed with something, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. We've heard that so much that breaking down those though that paradigm and shifting, it's just, I just love humans for trying something new and for really just doing the work, just do the work and you'll get the results, right? It's amazing. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah, we are all for like modern medicine. We are all for modern medicine. Totally. Like we love, like we love uh, uh, helping people like medications and surgery when that is the only route, yeah. but the, as a society, as a culture, as a system, we have relied too much on medications and surgery. I mean, there's a, those are uh, good, they, they work well. Yeah, I would say they had role like previously when infectious diseases were more common. Yeah, and that not only infectious diseases, what I'm saying is like, if you have acute condition yeah. or severe condition, then totally. the medications and the surgeries are good. But when it comes to chronic disease, yeah. like chronic disease is, is like is, I would say, like eighty to ninety percent of diseases that we are seeing are due to poor diet and lifestyle. So yeah. when that is the case, we want to address the root cause rather than just managing with pills and procedures. Exactly. And if you don't address the root, the the root cause, which is a diet and lifestyle, and taking pills is like putting a bandaid yeah. on a deep, you know, sore without you know, addressing why the sore is there. Yeah, exactly. And like you said too, that when the person doesn't have those three elements, so if they don't have the knowledge, if they don't have the community, and if they don't have the skills, of course they need the medication and the surgery, right? Because they're not going to be able to implement that lifestyle change to get the results. So of course we need those medic. And for in some cases, you need it just temporarily until you can acquire those three things. And once you have it, then you can switch off. And there's, I'm working with a, um, a doctor right now who's trained as a functional medicine doctor. She pays another functional medicine doctor $25,000 a year to basically put her on medication. So it's one of those things that it's, you know, and she's, you know, this one other functional medicine doctor told her to not make the lifestyle changes because her body, you know, the, she needs to get all the diseases under control first with the medication. So she said to me, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And she's, you know, board certified physician as well. And, but she's just not there yet. She's just not there yet with the, with the skills, with the knowledge and the support, her community is telling her not to do it. So until she has those three things, it's going to be really hard for her and it's too overwhelming. So, you know, what I said to her, as I said, then, you know what, it's okay. Like, and I'm not the medical doctor. She's a medical doctor. And she's like, but do I go on the insulin? What do I do? And I said, if you're not willing to do these three things, you're going to have to take the medications for now because your numbers are so outrageous that it's going to be detrimental to your health. So you have to get the disease under control right now. And she's like, really? But what if, I, but they told me I have to stay on these forever. No, you don't have to stay on them forever. We can wean you off of them. And it, you know, and it might happen in a few weeks. It might take three months to do it, you know? So I want people to make sure that they're not um, just because someone's trained in lifestyle medicine or as functional medicine or internal medicine, all of those terms are wonderful, but your practitioner also has to have these three skills too. 
just like you have these three skills. And so you're able to teach that to your patients. And so it's important because I do see so many people saying, well, I've worked with this doctor for so long, but you know, they're just putting me on more and more meds. And you have to, if that's the case is that you're not getting the results, you do have to switch to somebody and just ask them. That's what I often say. Do you have these three skills, you know, to be able to support me? And if they do, then you're great. Then start working with that person because then you can at least get those results. Yeah, so those medications are important, even for the practitioners who are still working towards those, um, towards the lifestyle changes as well. It's important. So I know that we've been together and we said we'd stay together for about an hour and 20 minutes. We're almost up and I know you have a class to teach as well. I am going to have to say we have to do another podcast, please, because there's so many topics that we haven't um, gone into. Really, I want to get into in our next show with you. Um, if you are willing, really diving into the research side of it, because I think that's another area where we believe that if there's a study or, you know, that that says everything, but it's also the lack of studies, which also tells us a lot too. Also how studies are designed. It's really important. It's one aspect that we teach our nutrition and detox students. We teach them how to do research really well, they have to write a research paper. And it's because I want them to understand things around confirmation bias. I want to help them understand how to navigate the world of these studies that are out there and how to differentiate between, you know, a blog post that's just a blog post and it's not referenced to versus a blog post that has a lot of good research and how to also see how the, the research is designed. I want to help our audience understand how research studies get funded as well so that they can help look and see well, you know, who funded it? Is it peer reviewed? How was the study designed? You know, because it's important that we also look at, at these things as well. So we know that, okay, drinking red wine, doesn't mean, you know, that you need to be drinking red wine because you'll never be able to get the amount of resveratrol that you need. So there's this whole other side that Dr. Shoba that I think that you really could, um, could speak to very eloquently. Um, and then of course, um, I'd love to dive more into the science with you, like even just helping people understand what happened to your father's arterial plaque in that 90% blockage? Like, where did it go? These are questions that I know my clients ask, like, well, how did that happen? And there's this beautiful, um, um, what do I call it? It's like magic that happens inside the body. Um, and so helping people understand the science a little bit more too, I think is really, really important. So I know that you could probably speak to that um, in, in beautiful ways. But before we do sign off here, how... What do you want to leave our audience with? First of all, I know you want to connect them to the work you're doing. So we definitely are going to have to drive people there. But what, what's the one tip that you can leave our audience with right now to help them take that next step into that new paradigm? Wherever you are, like uh, recognizing that our food and our lifestyle habits, you know, they, they, they drive our health more than anything that our, uh, not, only, not only the physical health, it's both the mental health, that our physical health and mental health, these are largely dependent upon what we feed our body and what we feed our minds. This is in a, something that we can really control almost like on a, on a daily basis. And if you have chronic disease, it is, you know, we want you to know that whatever the chronic disease it is, it can be either reversed or better managed or like, you know, arrested by when you address the food and lifestyle. And not only having chronic disease, like even if you don't have disease, I know like a lot of us tend to speak in terms of disease. We want to like lead a very fulfilling life. Like we, we want to... Uh, I mean, spend time with the people that matter to most and be energetic. So, so that's what we want in our life to be happy. And what we put in our mouths really not only affects like our neck down, but also affects neck up. So food is that much powerful. So when, like when we, when we choose to put, I would say rich foods, in, yeah, it's in our body, that, yeah, like it's our, our lives also become richer. 
yes <laughs> foods that love us back yes the whole plant foods um, yeah just wherever you are just keep walking towards the whole foods that are plant based and uh, your body will love it exactly i love that i love that and i think that will be a great topic um for another podcast together it's that discussion around the mental health side of things because um this is another epidemic i would say that is upon us right now um that's bigger than anything else we're managing and it's definitely that and it's especially because it's affecting you know children from such an early age as well and all the way up until the alzheimer's and dementia and you know the ages where we're afflicted by that and happening earlier and earlier. So I think that'll be another great topic. I want to thank you so much for, again, doing the work that you're doing for putting yourself out there and helping people in these ways that is truly, truly, truly addressing the root cause of their health. Because by doing this work as well, you're also addressing the root causes of our entire social systems as well and our planetary health as well. Because when people put these plant-based foods in their mouth, they're also then healing the soil through the choices they make. They're healing the air quality, the soil quality, and more. That's another topic we can get into. So the work you're doing is incredibly powerful on all levels. So thank you very much for that. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, much, Nicolette, Nicolette, for having us. (laughs) Thank you for all the amazing work you're doing. It's been a pleasure. It's a, it's a pleasure being born in this time in this world and being able to do this work. <laughs> so where can people find you? Let's sign off with that. Oh, yeah. I would love for, you, for them to visit uh, giftofhealth.org, uh, www.giftofhealth.org. And uh, they can explore. Uh, there are lots of free recipes there, blog posts, and inspiring stories of people who have transformed there they could find information about how people, they could work with us and join our food as medicine course. And uh, we're also on uh, Facebook. Uh, it's a uh, gift of health. If you type in Facebook, like uh, you'll find that uh, page. They could like us there. We're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, but the best place to start is I would say go to the website and uh, join our uh, the mailing list and uh, we will keep you in the loop. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. We will have all of that in the show notes so that people can find you and get started today. Everyone who's listening, do not waste another day. Just get started today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicolette. And uh, like, yeah, I'm, (laughs) I'm, I'm glad like you uh, approached us. It was such a pleasure to do this. So thank you for this opportunity. As promised, wasn't that an incredible podcast? The information that this couple shares is, you know, truly life-changing. It can save your life. It could save your family's life. After all, we all know somebody in our community, in our immediate family, and potentially it is you that is currently battling a chronic lifestyle condition like diabetes, heart disease, an autoimmune disorder. And of course, with all of these conditions, There are usually mental health conditions that go along with that, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and more. So you do not have to live with these conditions. If we look hard enough, if we implement the lifestyle changes, we often can see such remarkable results, even as much as reversing the actual disease, getting off your meds and being able to cancel an upcoming surgery. And I know that you want that. Nobody likes to see somebody suffer. Nobody likes to see somebody in pain. We ourselves don't want to be in pain and hurting and tired and lacking energy. So you can take this information, chew on it, digest it, no pun intended. And you can go out there and actually pick up a book. We have them in the show notes below. You can go to Dr. Arjun and Dr. Shoba's website which is the gift of health.org. You can follow all the links and you can start taking action today, or maybe you just need a little bit more information. So I encourage you before you swipe life left, swipe right, or turn off your phone, consider opening up another podcast and then another podcast, pick up another book and then another book. And then there's going to come a point where you actually just need to implement the changes. And making lifestyle changes isn't easy, which is what I love about thegiftofhealth.org. 
and the incredible food as medicine program that Dr. Arjun and Dr. Shoba offer. So don't wait another day to change your life for the better. You can start making these changes today in as little as a few weeks. You could be living an entirely different life. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to the show and to listen to all of our other shows. And if you know of someone out there that has successfully reversed their diabetes, heart disease, infertility, autoimmune disorders, we would love to share their story on our podcast because ultimately stories heal. Thanks everyone for being with us. Talk to you soon. See you at the next podcast. 